Welcome to this introductory screencast on the ExoSwitch Constraint Maya plugin. The ExoSwitch Constraint is a multi-directional constraining system. Current constraints like position and orientation are one-way streets. You cannot really change uh, the influences from one node to another on the fly. The nature of the constraint is that the relationship between the nodes is predetermined. It's built into the constraint itself. This means that character rigs are delivered to animators in a predetermined state, which limits the way an animator can interface with that character. And as the industry has matured, the rigs have matured in that we have thrown in increased complexity to address this one-way street limitation. To address this problem, we created the, ex the exoswitch constraint. And at its core, the design creates a constraint-like relationship between nodes, but it does it on the fly so that an animator or a rigger can change the system at any given time. In addition, that relationship is animatable. So not only does it help with posing, but it also helps with animation. So to kind of demonstrate this, we're going to use this simple scene here with these three cubes. And we're going to rig them up into an exoswitch constraint system. And then uh, a little bit later, we will animate that system. And then in future movies, we're going to be covering uh, the shelf but in here and some of the uh, specific features of the constraint system and showing how you can use it for rigging and posing. So let's go ahead and create a constraint and kind of show visually what it does. So uh, this is the exoswitch constraint shelf and over here to the far left is where we can actually build a constraint system. Let's go ahead and use that and we, if you notice right here we have a number of different text fields that need to be filled in so the first thing is we have a node that is going to be a driver or multiple nodes. We have split out the transformation so that you can have one node as the translation driver and another node as the rotation driver, or you can have uh, the same node as both translation and rotation, or you can leave one of the fields blank and not have any rotational influence on the system at all. So let's go ahead and choose cube three here as our translation and rotation driver. We will use these other cubes as the driven objects. So we'll grab them as driven and let's go ahead and add the constraint. And here in the outliner you get an exoswitch constraint. If you notice in the channel box you will see a number of different attributes that are that are added. You see the translation driver and the rotation driver, what nodes are being driven, and then some other features that we will cover a little bit later. So uh, in the translation driver, if you notice, I have a pull down and it lists all of the members of the constraint system. Same with the rotation driver. And the driven nodes, it gives me who is actually being driven. So let's go ahead and grab cube three and let's go ahead and manipulate it. And do some rotation as well. And you will see it's acting like a parent constraint on the other two cubes. And now if we can change this relationship on the fly, we'll show how the constraint system works. So let's say that at this point in time, or just in either in time and animation terms, or at this point in posing terms, we would like to manipulate the system from cube one's pivot. We're going to change our translation and rotation driver to be cube one. So on the constraint itself, we'll go over here to the translation driver, and we're going to change it to cube one. Same with the rotation driver, cube one. And now if we pick cube one, he becomes the manipulator of the system. And let's do, this should be cube two. So let's show cube two, cube two. All right, and then let's put the system in kind of an automatic selection equals current driver mode. Uh, auto switch. So we're just going to put the system real quick in, into this mode just to demonstrate that um, posing it and manipulating it is very fast and intuitive for you. All right. And let's actually um, let's actually animate it and animate specifically the relationship um, changing over time. So we're going to have cube one kind of start us out here. And we're going to keyframe translation and rotation. And then we are going to kind of move forward in time. And we're also going to keyframe that he is the translation and rotation driver on frame 10. And we're going to kind of 
rotate him. Let's rotate him up like this. And we will key that. And then on the next frame, what we want to do is we're, we're going to make cube 3 the master. So let's go on the on frame 11, pick our constraint, and make cube 3 our driver. Keyframe that relationship. Go over here to cube 3, and we'll key this state. And then we're going to rotate him up in X and kind of bring the whole system up as we go. Let's key that. Let's go all the way back and kind of play through, if you will. And we'll, we'll select the constraint so that you can see that the the attributes are going to change as we, as we go. So we're going to kind of rotate the system, then it switches drivers and driven. So here, in, you know, before frame 11, we have cube 1 as our driver, and then on frame 11, it switches over to cube 3. So this is a really basic um, overview of manipulating an exoswitch constraint system and how it builds these type of relationships on the fly and how you can animate uh, the nodes and you can also animate that driver and driven relationship. In the next movie we are going to be covering additional features of the constraint as well as the shelf. Thanks.